Hey, welcome to Zach's Tector. Today, we're gonna be reviewing the PMY GTX 1050 Ti. Now, I've done a lot of GPU benchmark videos in the past, but I've never done a full-blown review on a GPU, so this should be pretty interesting. Let's get into it. Usually when I review a product, such as my favorite pair of headphones, the Sony XB950BTs, I like to start with the physical tour and then we'll get into the specs later, so I'll continue that. This PMY version of the GTX 1050 Ti is one of my favorite designs because of the stealth out clean black look to it. Everything on the heatsink except for the GTX 1050 Ti and the PMY badge are a stealthed out black, so this should match the color scheme of almost any build. This card is a dual slot 7 inch by 4.38 inch card, and this will allow you to fit it in even the smallest of cases. Looking at the outputs, which is pretty standard of the GTX 1050 Ti, you have an HDMI 2.0B, DisplayPort 1.4, and Dual Link DVI. This PCI Express card requires no external power from a power supply, which is awesome. I'll talk about that again later. Moving on, I'm I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the specs because I don't really care that much. At the end of the day, all we really care about is how many FPS we're getting. There's no accurate way to convert CUDA cores, core clock, and boost clock to FPS, so I'm not going to emphasize it that much. The specs that I feel obligated to share are as follows. 768 CUDA cores, 1290 MHz core clock and boosting up to 1392, 4GB of DDR5 VRAM, and a TDP of 71 watts. The PMY GTX 1050 Ti is a Pascal card that supports all the main Pascal features such as the Anzel, GameStream, DirectX 12, and G-Sync. Finally, let's get into the benchmarks. All benchmarks are in 1080p because that's where this graphics card is aimed for. The first game I tested was none other than Overwatch. Make sure you guys check out my Overwatch without a graphics card video. I'm sure the results will surprise you if you haven't checked that out already. First I tested it on high and I quickly realized that I wasn't even testing this GPU hard enough, averaging 92 FPS. So I cranked up the settings to epic and got a respectable 60 FPS. Next, I fired up The Witcher 3 to see what this card could do. I started on low and got an easy 70 to 80 FPS, so I found medium to be a good sweet spot, averaging 53 frames per second. I'm sure you could tweak the settings in between these to get a silky smooth 60 if you wanted to. Then I fired up the built-in Shadow of Mordor benchmark, and in 1080p on Ultra, I got a very impressive 58 FPS average, which blew me away. You can clearly see that these settings are no joke, and the game looks really good. For fun, I gave 1440p a shot with medium settings and got 54 FPS, not bad. Finally, in celebration of the Halloween season, I tested out possibly my favorite game of 2016, Killing Floor 2, and on ultra settings I got 61 FPS. For those of you that live and die by 3D Mark synthetic benchmark testing, I got you covered. For the DirectX 12 test, Time Spy, the GTX 1050 Ti got a score of 2,309, and for Fire Strike it got 6,245. Finally, I want to talk about who this graphics card is actually for. At 150 bucks, the benchmarks truly impressed me, but with only 4 gigabytes of VRAM, you're not going to be able to play at higher resolution games in the future, but for 1080p gaming right now, this is pretty much perfect. Without needing external power from a PSU, you can pretty much plug this into any older desktop from the last few years and increase your gaming performance by a huge amount. Stay tuned to Zach's Tech Turf, I got some ideas for some upcoming videos about this. This version of the GTX 1050 Ti is aesthetically pleasing being all black, and with this small footprint, it'll fit in almost any case for them small budget builds. Real quickly before ending this video, let me introduce the sponsor of this video, Technic Share, which is a company of social media experts. For the past few months, they have helped my social media grow so much and they can help you too. Their info is down in the description. Well that wraps up my review of the PMY GTX 1050 Ti. I plan on making a lot of future videos using this graphics card, including benchmarks and even gaming builds, so make sure you guys let me know what you want to see. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.